The international scandal occurred 35 years ago, on May 28, 1987. German pilot Matthias Rust landed on Red Square in the heart of the Soviet capital. He flew over the border without any problems, flew into Moscow, and dived onto the Bolshoi Moskvoreski Bridge a few dozen meters from the Kremlin. The amateur pilot was only 18 years old. The scandal was huge. In the USSR, Border Guard Day was celebrated on this day. In fact, this story is not very harmless. The result of this landing was the mass resignations of the entire leadership of the armed forces of the USSR. The army lost about 300 senior officers. And also, this incident accelerated the collapse of the USSR, which occurred four years later. But let's talk about everything in order. Matthias was born into the family of an electrical engineer. His father taught the child to technology from a young age. At the age of five, Matthias got to the airfield and swore himself that he would become a pilot. The wish came true, and at the age of 17, the guy passed the exams and received a pilot's license. Matthias rented a Cessna 172 light engine aircraft from his flying club. This is an American aircraft, the most massive in the history of aviation. The first aircraft was produced back in 1955, and since then, about 44,000 Cessna 172s have been produced. The most massive aircraft in the history of aviation gained such popularity because of its reliable and simple design. The high position of the wing gave a good view from the cockpit of the Cessna 172, which greatly helps novice pilots when landing. Add to this the steerable nose landing gear which helped a lot when taxiing at the airfield, as well as good flight characteristics and ease of control. Therefore, the Cessna 172 was an excellent choice for such a flight. First, Matthias was an inexperienced pilot. Secondly, a good view down was important in low-altitude flight conditions. And thirdly, an economical engine made it possible to overcome a long distance calmly with a supply of fuel. The young guy came up with the idea to fly to Moscow almost immediately. He was preparing for a shocking act. First, he flew to a summit in Iceland, where Reagan and Gorbachev met. Matthias was very upset that the summit didn't advance the peace talks. The Cold War continued. Rust outlined his motive in an interview with Komsomovskaya Pravda. I was afraid that if Gorbachev relaxed, his rivals would remove him. Therefore, I wanted to fly to Moscow, shake his hand, and say that there are a lot of people in the West who think that he is doing everything right. And he drew useful conclusions after the first flight to Iceland. Matthias realized that he could easily cross borders undetected. When Matthias returned to Hamburg, he realized that he could make a serious flight to the capital of the USSR. When a Komsol Moskaya Pravda journalist asked Rust years later why he chose Red Square, Matthias answered sincerely, I didn't know anything else in Moscow. On the morning of May 28th, Matthias went to the start. According to his recollections, his knees literally trembled. He overcame his fear with difficulty and took off. Near the city of Numela in southern Finland, he cut off communications on board, abruptly changed course and flew onto the air route connecting Moscow and Helsinki. The Finns began a search and rescue operation. When they saw an oil slick in the water, they thought the aircraft had crashed and they called for help. The flight was not easy. It was cloudy and therefore, Matthias was guided where he was purely visually. He noticed large objects like railways and Lake Pipus, which he marked on the map in advance. The aircraft disappeared from Finnish radar at 1400, but at 1410, it was spotted by Soviet air defense systems. From that moment on, the aircraft was taken by anti-aircraft systems, but they didn't give the command to destroy. The Convention on International Civil Aviation, which was signed by the USSR, the USA and 50 other countries, forbade the destruction of light aircraft without good reason. The maximum that they can do is to force them to land. Soviet border air defense systems worked correctly. The aircraft didn't pass the radar, as many Soviet newspapers later wrote. We will analyze at the end of the video why they wrote this. The aircraft was spotted by air defense units, and they even raced several MiG-21 and MiG-23 to intercept. One of the fighters found the aircraft visually, but it was difficult to follow it because the Cessna aircraft was flying low and slow compared to the MiG-23. 
Neither the air defense unit nor the fighter pilot took any action due to the lack of a clear order. Rust noticed the fighters, but according to him, they circled him a couple of times and never returned. A vulnerability for air defense systems is the space between location zones. Rust went off the radar in one of these places, and then an incident happened. In Skoff, they took him for their aircraft and freely let him through. At that moment, military exercises were going on there, and there were many aircraft in the air, including light engine ones. They understood the mistake, but it was too late when the aircraft was already approaching the Moscow region. But they didn't expect that the aircraft was foreign. They thought it was a Soviet light engine aircraft that flew out without a request, and for some reason, they decided not to report it. Why was the aircraft noticed but not shot down? There are two reasons. An instruction not to shoot down civilian aircraft after a South Korean Boeing 747 was shot down in September 1983. But the main reason is the lack of an order. Nobody wanted to take responsibility. But they still could shoot down the aircraft. In the Military Space Defense magazine, Colonel General of Aviation Voltaire Kraskovsky said that the Air Marshal Alexander Kolnodov didn't know that a foreign aircraft was flying to Moscow. In his opinion, Koldanov would have gone to extreme measures if he had learned about the incident. Thus, the Matthias Russ life hung in the balance, and he was saved by chance. At 1830, Matthias flew into Moscow. Further, he focused on the Rossiya Hotel, which he had previously marked on the map. When Matthias flew up to Red Square, he began to look for a place to land, but he couldn't land on the square itself. There were many people in the square. The pilot made three laps to let the audience know he wanted to land, but no one was going to leave. Then, he decided to land on the Bolshoi Matskoyevsky Bridge. He caught a red light and landed just in time to avoid hitting cars. He landed and came straight to St. Basil's Cathedral. The flight took over six hours. At 1221, the pilot took off from Helsinki, and at 1843, he landed. The Soviet public greeted Matthias warmly. They took autographs from him, which he willingly gave out. Some 16-year-old Soviet guy knew English well. He acted as a translator for Matthias and the public. The security forces were also there. They were watching the Mets, and they detained him at 20 hundred hours. The trial took place three months later. Matthias was charged with hooliganism and sentenced to four years in prison. He was in a cell with an English teacher who was imprisoned as a profiteer, so Matthias could communicate but he stayed there for a little over a year and was granted an amnesty. But in Europe, even worse punishment awaited him. While Matthias was flying to Moscow, the Finns were looking for the missing aircraft all this time. They were sure that it had crashed and drowned. The Finnish authorities issued a large bill to Matthias because the search operation was very expensive. The fine against the Germans exceeded $100,000, but according to Rust, the fine was reduced. The Soviet media criticized the high command of the Soviet army. Allegedly, this is a failure of the Soviet air defense. When Matthias Rust returned home from a Soviet prison, his pilot license was taken away. He got a job in a hospital, but there, he attacked a nurse with a knife who refused to meet with him. He was sentenced to four years in prison, but he was released from there a year later. Then he worked as anyone. He sold clothes and shoes. When he learned that he played a part in the collapse of the Soviet Union, he came to Moscow. He was there for a month, tried to meet with Gorbachev, but he didn't succeed. He got upset and left to travel around Southeast Asia. He converted to Hinduism, married an Indian woman, the daughter of a wealthy tea merchant. After, he returned to Germany. But Russ didn't give up his strange habits here either. For some reason, he stole an expensive sweater from a clothing store, for which he was heavily fined. Rust continued to make a living in alternative ways, staying true to his habits. He played poker and taught yoga courses. And he provided analyst services for novice investors, which is quite paradoxical. He made good money from the book. He published a memoir about his flights. And the aircraft was bought by a Japanese collector. Then he sold it to the German Technical Museum at almost cost, where it remains to this day. What do you think? Was it a planned action of the special services? Or was it really a series of luck and accidents? Thank you for watching.